the final Sunday of the final regular season event of the LPGA's 2022 schedule has dawned overcast a few spits of rain a little cooler a little breezy here at the Pelican Women's Championship a punched up leaderboard Grant Boone Morgan Pressel looking for someone to make a move and so far Early on, Carlota Segonda, the Spaniard for birdie at one. Started as a really bunched up leaderboard, but Carlota off to the hottest start of the day. Can she make it two in a row? This at par for second with a wild sloping green, no problem. So that tied her at 10 under par, began the day two shots back of Allison Corpus at the third for three in a row. All from the similar distance, 10 to 15 feet, beautiful strokes. So that gave her the lead outright, and then her second at the fourth. A little right off the tee, but whole location today, located in the center bowl of this fourth hole. It's a little bit of release from coming out of the rough, manages it perfectly. Unos dos, tres, cuatro, four straight birdies for Carlota Segonda to take the lead. Lexi Thompson, a birdie at five after four pars. And then at the sixth, another. So Lexi within one of Saganda, and then to tie her at seven. After being in the green side bunker in two, using her length to her advantage, and another beautiful stroke. So as we show you the leaderboard, you've got a couple of proven winners. Lexi Thompson, Carlota Saganda, each looking to snap long victory droughts. The defending champion, Nelly Corda, the rookie, Allison Corpus. It is tied at the top for the final round in Bel Air, Florida. NBC Sports and the LPGA Tour proudly present this season-long race to the CME Globe. From Bel Air, Florida, it's final round coverage of the Pelican Women's Championship. Here in this city where the LPGA played for the very first time back in 1950. It's the final regular season event of 2022. Pelican Golf Club opened nearly 100 years ago, redesigned in 2018, and this is what the board looked like with the rookie from Hawaii, Allison Corpus, leading it by one, coming into this final round. But 18 players were within five shots of her. It is wild at the top of the leaderboard. Morgan and I are joined by Tom Abbott, and out on the golf course, Karen Stupples, Kate Cockrell, and Angela Stanford. So Saganda, who got off to that hot start, scrambling at the eighth for par, and Angela Stanford is there. Yeah, this putt's going to be downhill, down grain. Toughest hole this week, and it's claim another victim. Yeah, just out of position, off the tee, well right off the tee. Miss hit her shot off the pine straw, and it's just a really tough hole. So now Lexi leads it by one as we take you back to the seventh. And this is Alison Corpus. Is this where her second shot finished up, Karen? No, it's not. This uh, she was in the little swale uh, just to the right of the front right bunker, and she tried to play a shot, but uh, the club just got stuck in the ground as it was so into the grain and barely just got it to this point here. I was concerned it might even come back to her feet, but as it is, has this chance for a birdie. Long range, though. Good effort. Yep. So steadied herself down after that mistake. And it will be a par, no damage to the card. Huge day for Corpus. She's tied with Nelly Corda, but maybe not for long. Nelly for birdie at eight. <laughs> That's three birdies for Nelly today, including back to back at seven and eight, and the defending champion. Is just one back. She and Lexi battled it out last year. Seven again. Yeah, another rookie in the final pairing, the Swede, Maya Stark. Well, just having come off a bogey at the previous hole, Tom, her tee shot went a little bit left and was quite fortunate that the ground is so soft, so it didn't get a bad kick into the penalty area off the tee left, but was forced to lay up, had a really good wedge to this point. 
left herself a downhiller here. Really feisty competitor. There yeah. you go. Good effort there. Maya's had great success in the short time that she's been a pro. She has a win on the LPGA Tour, which came this summer in Northern Ireland, but she's uh, added five wins on the Ladies European Tour as well and only turned pro in August. A couple of very talented Swedes coming through right now on the LPGA starting Lynn Grant. Now Nelly Corder at the ninth. And that's safely to the left okay. of the hole. You can see the breeze is up today. Hasn't really been too much of a factor over the first couple of days here. Now leading it by one, Kay Cockrell watching Lexi Thompson. And I'm sure she has no idea she is leading by one. That's a seven iron into this tricky hole. Not much room behind this hole. Mm. That's about as good as she could have drawn that up right there. I mean, you'll never know with Lexi. She always has these kind of quirky leans, and you never know, but that was about as good as it gets. That's going to be for four in a row as we take you back to the ninth. Segunda on the tee. Sí, perfecto. It's a good time to have a wedge in your hand coming off your first bogey of the day. You know, the wind has picked up, but she has an opportunity to put a good swing on it and maybe get back on track. Well, I could understand uh, the final words from the caddy there, perfecto. He loves this, whatever they've decided. Should set up nicely to her, her eye the front light right hole location she likes to let the ball drip a little bit to the right don't like it uh, too far left too much of a bailout now leaving herself a tricky putt that flag on the front right the water does loom Coming off the birdie at seven, Maya Stark on the tee at the eighth. Well, this one back into the wind. So trying to maximize as much as you can out of this tee shot, and that's just fine. It's an important hole, as we saw with Carlotta not too long ago, to hit a good tee shot, because the green is, is about as tricky as it gets. It is, and you know, the green you have the, the slope from front to back, but you also have the drop offs on either side, too, with a longer club in your hand. Not always easy. Plenty of room down the right side, though. Not so much down the left with the bunker that on there that comes into play. The one on the right won't into the wind. That'll do nicely. She does have a nice little soft fade on her shots. She was a little concerned about the length, she said, when she saw all the moisture this week. Well, it played really, really long, especially on Friday, but it's firmed up a good bit, especially on the on those tee shots. Lexi Thompson with three straight birdies to take the lead, and she's got a short one coming up for a fourth in a row. Hi, I'm Paul Riley, Chair and CEO of Raymond James Financial. Once again, Raymond James is honored to be the presenting sponsor of the Pelican Women's Championship. We continue to partner with the LPGA because of our shared commitment to supporting women's professional development in the workplace and in our communities. At Raymond James, we focus on providing women with the tools and resources to create lasting impacts and with the support to help grow their businesses. From everyone at Raymond James, thank you to the staff and volunteers for making this event possible and for allowing us the opportunity to be a part of something so special. Wishing the best of luck to all players in the field this week, and once again, thank you very much. Better on the screen, it is virtually a straight putt, maybe just pulling to the left slightly. She's aiming at the right edge. Gorgeous. Four birdies in a row and just four wonderful putts, three in a row of just about that length. Ball striking is spot on and, and rolling in the putts, not showing so much confidence, really. 
to the ninth. Carlo de Seganda for a birdie. She has a lot to navigate here. It's up and then down, and the grain wants to take it to the front of the green. Leaving herself a little bit of work to do. We have seen players chip the ball and pop the ball into the water on different holes uh, around this golf course. The greens can be very difficult and make people look foolish. So when you see a player come up shy like that, you know, there are uh, a lot of reasons to be cautious around here, Angela. Yeah, this is, you know, this entire green is really difficult to putt. Even though you have a wedge in your hand on the tee, the wind's down, it's across, and Nelly hit a great shot in here, probably has one of the better looks of the day. Just running out of speed. It's gonna be a three for Nelly. Good first nine holes, though. Three under par when this goes in. Par 35, 35. So 32 on the front for Nelly. Been working hard on her game. Has had three weeks off. Said she needed the rest. Has been pushing a little bit too much since coming back from that uh, surgery earlier in the season. Morgan, there's that eighth green you were talking about. It's so narrow, and you yep, can see perfect. it dips off on both sides as well, as Karen mentioned. And uh, Allison Corpus, Karen, she talked about it. She played with Aylin Ken and Maya Stark the first couple of days. She said, I went first a lot. She's going first here. Yeah, but it's not by much first there, here, though. And most of it is just because of the angle that she has to that flag. And she's got 194. And this will be her four hybrid. She's got a, a slight upslope. It's not a massive one. But it will put a bit more loft on this shot. Because this hole is back into the wind, you're not going to get as much release on this green as you would have done the first two days. I'll just trickle just to the back of the green. It's not the end of the world over there. And she struck it well, didn't she? Yeah, it looked like what she was trying to do maybe played for a little bit too much wind. Carlotta Segunda got off to such a good start today with those four consecutive birdies. Doesn't want to end this nine with two straight bogeys. Dropped a shot at eight. This to avoid the three putt at nine. And that's a huge mistake on a hole which is only measuring 120 yards today. Let's go to eight. And the second for Maya Stark. Stark's got a four on in her hand, but it's on a really steep upslope. Gonna have to work hard to keep this one down, which she has done. This is from 191. A little bit of a double cross, kind of similar to what she did back on the sixth hole. That's gonna leave a little bit trickier of a shot to just show off her short game again here. Pitched in here at the eighth yesterday for birdie. Get you over just a few steps away to the ninth tee. Yes. Only three rounds this year because of the washout on Thursday. It's the first year the ninth hole has not played under 100 yards in any of the rounds of the Pelican Women's Championship. Still, it's a good birdie opportunity with a wedge in your hand. And there's uh, the big American flag that's near the clubhouse. You can see in the distance, and, and players and caddies will refer to that. It, it feels like the wind's starting to kind of switch around a little more coming out of the west, which is right to left. Still hurting a little bit. There it is, just on the other side of uh, Poinsettia Road. Actually, excuse me, just right to left, and this is a wedge. Lexi just trying to get a good feel for the rhythm and and sort of the pace that she wants to hit this with. I think it's very understandable if the ball ends up whole high left, and that would be a really good shot. And that 
that's uh, that's the spot. That's it. Yeah. Nicely done there by Lexi. While we have a moment, let's go up to the booth. Tom, thank you. The final day of the final regular season event of 2022 on the LPGA Tour. Next week, 60 players will vie for a $2 million first prize at the CME Group Tour Championship. But Morgan, whether you're a fresh-faced rookie or a crusty veteran, we have learned, haven't we, just how hard it is to win. Six years since Carlota Seganda has won. It's been three and a half years nearly since Lexi won it for Nelly Corda. Here she is trying to win for the first time in 2022. Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting. You made this point uh, earlier when we were off, we weren't on the air that the most recent winner on the leaderboard is Maya Stark and the on the top part. And she's a rookie and has actually made it to CME with only about half of a rookie season. It's been very impressive what we've seen from the rookie class and all the first time winners this year. But I, I would definitely look to the veterans coming down the stretch today to as we've seen anything can happen on this golf course the 16th hole is really challenging the 17th and then the 18th has been one of the hardest holes all week and, and every year that we have played here so i think there's a lot of fireworks that could happen coming down the stretch and there are definitely some birdies to be made i've been very impressed with what we've seen from lexi so far carlotta stumble a little bit i think that could be a really big missed putt for carlotta on the ninth hole be interesting to see how she responds to that and Watch out for the rookies just tailing by just a little bit. Battling the course, battling each other, battling nerves. Here Starks third at eight. And I think she can land this one sort of halfway between the hole and the edge of the green. She does generate a lot of spin. There you go. Oh, nearly did it again like she did yesterday here. It was the 17th hole yesterday for these two. And this got her into the final pair. And Morgan, this was a touch of class. Is playing with Allison Corp, who's they were both kind of fighting for the lead at this point. And honestly, with the wedge in her hand, what I've seen in half a season so far from Maya Stark, I've been exceptionally impressed. She has a lot of creativity and a lot of touch and uh, a little bit Lydia esque. That's a good comparison. 22 years old, played at Oklahoma State from Sweden. She failed at second stage last year, and so she didn't have her LPGA card, went to Europe, but she won the co-sanctioned event there that Tom mentioned, the ISPS Hand to World Invitational, co-sanctioned LET and the LPGA Tour. She accepted membership after she won. She played, by the way, that final day with Allison Corpuz, with whom she's playing again today, and Allison would love Karen to follow her into the winner's circle. She would. I mean, she'd be playing. You know, pretty consistently, she's had that second place and she's had an eighth place finish as well. You know, she's been playing okay. I mean, she said in her press conference how she thought she would have to have to be really struggling by this stage of the proceedings to keep her card, but she isn't. But that was a bit aggressive going up that slope into the grain there. That looked like a last second thought creeped into her head there, Karen, of hit it hit it through this fringe i've got to hit it harder and that just exploded off of her putter face seven pars to start but a struggle at the eighth for corpus coming up first over to the ninth where well, lexi thompson is looking at her birdie tom with a wedge in her hand probably a little further away obviously than she would have liked but it's kind of a nervy little tee shot with a wedge and the wind helping right to left it was smart play to end up on the fat part of the green and it's left her pretty close to 30 feet with a gently moving left to right putt the entire way. Older brother Nicholas very involved in reading the greens. He does the old fashioned plum bob with his with the wedge in his hand. They've played a ton of golf together through the years. I think it's very comfortable, Kay, for yes. Lexi having her brother on the bag. And sometimes her other brother, Curtis, is also caddied for her yep. a good bit as well. And like a lot of young girls growing up who have brothers, try to keep up with them, try to beat them, and it's made her the better player for it. It's a good little sibling rivalry, isn't it? Because, of course, professional winner of the New Zealand Open in his career, which was... Uh, Big win for him. 
Horn Ferry victory. Allison Corpus for par at the eighth. I know there's a lot of golf to be played, but I think this is a big putt for, for Allison. She's had a number of birdie opportunities so far on this front side, hasn't been able to capitalize, and now she's being tested with a par putt. I think if she was to be able to get this one to disappear, I think things would settle down immensely for her. But yeah, it's so far, it just seems like one of those days where, mm. I mean, that was a little bit of a tentative putt, unsure, a little uncertainty. First dropped shot of the day for Corpus. One up when the day began, now four in arrears to the ninth. It's happening with Maria Foss, CK. Hoping for a lot better play than she's seen so far. Started out with a positive note, a birdie at the first, but bogeys at two, five, and six have really derailed her, and she's not been able to turn it around yet. Maria trying to play her way into next week. Currently projected 66, so needs a few birdies. Tough to tell how many she needs, maybe only one. Keep an eye on that. Maya Stark will be there after her incredible rise this summer. This for par. Yeah, not a huge amount in this one, but you do have to pay attention to the slight little break that it does have to the left. There you go. She has gotten it up and down from all over Bel Air, Florida, just a three square mile area. This little town near Tampa, Lexi by two. Defending champion Nelly Corda at the 10th, where Angela Stanford is watching. She has 174 to the flag, downwind. She needs to land it on top, Angela? Downwind, possibly. It's 154 to that spot. Don't hit the down slope. Oh, it did hit the down slope, but just had enough spin. It's Come gonna back. get, this is gonna keep getting better. We saw earlier in the week, Jody, you were chat off, hit the downslope, and it just repel all the way over the green. That was fantastic. Back to the ninth. And Maya Stark on the tee. And this is a wedge. The wind is into and slightly off the right. She's an aggressive player, Karen. She it's goes an aggressive line. Yeah, she's going to get away with it, I think. It's a tougher hole location than we had in the final round last year. But we've actually seen more birdies here, so players have figured this hole out. This is the 15th and the most recent winner on the LPGA Tour. Gemma Driver, who broke through in Japan last week. This was a moment ago. And... Oh, what, a, what an effort that is from Gemma. Spoke to her before her round today and said, how are you feeling? Are you exhausted? She said, I am exhausted, but I'm loving it. It's a great run for the UK. Three of the last four winners have come from there. A couple of English women, Charlie Hall and Jody Rachanoff, and a Scott. And so, hello to Sagata Angela, trying to keep this European theme going late in the 2022 season. She has to right the ship here, doesn't she? Yeah, I think so. I think she's in a good spot. She had a great kick. Her tee ball, Nelly's just plopped in the fairway, just stopped. And Saganda's ran like 30 yards. So, I mean, she has, you know, Nelly had 176, and Saganda's looking at 146. So, she may be able to land it all the way down to the flat. That's what I was thinking, Morgan. She has more of an opportunity to just go right at the flag. She likes it. Okay. Rolled her ankle last week in Japan. So she's walking gingerly. Got that ankle taped. And she could really use that birdie to drop after falling three behind to nine. And Corpus T shot. This also a wedge, Tom, and quite an aggressive line here, too. Yeah, one of the best we've seen. Takes a couple of rookies, Tom, to take the aggressive line. No fear. Lexi, her brother Nick, 
yeah. on the tee at the 10th. That window. Yes. One back when the round began, now leading it by two and a comfort level, not just with Nick on the back, but in Florida, golf course where she's played well before Morgan. Yeah, and a golf course that, like right here, doesn't really take one of her biggest weapons, her driver, out of her hands, Kay. She's got no trouble with that bunker on the left. Should easily be able to carry it. Fairly generous fairways around this golf course. And she is just, she said coming into this week that she was feeling really, really comfortable with her golf swing, and it is showing. It's time to take a look at this swing control presented by National Car Rental. Of course, we talk about this club, the driver, and we'll pay attention to that left foot. It's part of her power move. She gets all the way to the top, and she really sits into the ground to start the downswing. Then she pushes off the ground and gets that left side out of the way. It's how she gets the strength of her lower body out to the club. Think about Laura Davies had a very similar move as well. Way to generate a lot of power. Swing control brought to you by National Car Rental. Even has her little pup, Leo, out here today. Her folks, Scott and Judy, walking and cheering her on as she tries to win again. Nine. Maya Stark for birdie. I think because of the influence of the bunker that's right behind her, the initial roll will be to the right, but as it approaches the hole, it'll turn left. Oh, well oh, read, go. Karen. Well, if the commentary doesn't work out, you, you'd be a great caddy. <laughs> I have a feeling that Maya Stark's not going to go away this afternoon. I think she is going to hang tough. She is a fiery competitor with tremendous talent. She's already won once this season, and I just love her aggressive nature. Here's Carlo de Seganda, birdied her first four holes, but a couple of bogeys have dropped her from two ahead to three behind Angela for birdie here this is a great look probably eight feet a little uphill maybe a little into the grain you know the one who's watching the most is Nellie because she's her mark is just beside Carlota's ball so Nellie's paying attention but I feel like that was a putt for Carlotta's confidence she maybe needed to see go in Angela 127 starts since her last victory almost six years ago to the day. Nine again. Corpus to follow in Stark with the birdie. Shorter distance, and this one is going to move to the right. Now that my Stark started to make some parts, going on a bit of a roll, Corpus is going to feel a little bit of pressure to keep up, and this club really letting her down today. Nelly was paying attention, as you said, here, and this for Birdie to get within one of Lexi. She talked to her caddy, Jason, earlier today before the round. He said, we're due for a good Sunday. It's been a while, and we are due for a big Sunday round. Well, on the other end of the spectrum, you've got players like Jarena Mendoza, number 104 on the CME points list. Morgan, you've known her a long time. She's got a chance to move inside the top 100 today. She's putting together a really solid round of golf. Beautiful control with her iron right there. That'll be for Birdie to get to two under on the day and probably at least at that moment get her inside number 100. Back home location at 10. Lexi Thompson's lead yeah. is like one. Yeah, I mean, if anything, I think it's 98% down. Yeah, this is just an, it's an awkward second shot because you cannot see the bottom of the flag stick. And as we've talked about, you have to trust the number. 
and now you have the extra element of wind, which is helping and left to right. Almost an audible deep breath, Kay. Yeah, well, athletes are trained to keep breathing and, and those extra deep breaths to stay relaxed. That from 159 yards. Might have pulled it a little. It's going to be just Good. fine. And, and you, as, a, as a player, you don't know how close or how far it is. You just have to rely on some crowd reaction. So she's going to like it when she sees it, I believe. Take a look at our insights by KPMG. Most top tens without a win since the start of 2020. And Morgan Lexi Thompson has been knocked down by this game a lot. She just keeps getting back up. She's probably one of the hardest workers, if not the hardest worker out here. But that just shows her consistency. I mean, she is always putting herself within the last few groups going into the final day. And it's very impressive. Well, Maria Fossey made a big back nine move in Cincinnati to get her career best finish in an individual event earlier this summer. And here she is with her second of the 10th. Yeah, not, she has just not been dialed in with her irons for the most part today. She's either under hit it or over hit it. She was trying to get that to fall a little bit to the right. It's going to get a little more challenging as that rolls down the slope. And so Joanna Mendoza with a bogey at 15 to knock her outside the projected top 100. Hmm. I think that surprised me as well from even in here. You'd think that putt should break a little bit towards the front of the green. Almost looked like it broke left. At this exact moment, she is number 100. The projected CME points standings top 100 after today's final round will be except next year on the LPGA Tour. It's been a nice little flurry from Maya Stark. She's on the tee at 10. Well, there's a nice hole. Have a little bit of down breeze helping you out here, too. Birdie. Nice to see a little bit of tumble as well on that tee shot. Morgan Birdie's at seven and nine, but the up and down at eight for Maya Stark was huge too, wasn't it? Uh, of course. Anytime you kind of miss hit a shot a little bit. I mean, she missed the mark by at least a club there. A little bit of a double cross and to save par on that, one of the most difficult holes on this golf course. How about Allison Corpus and maybe her mindset now nine holes into her final round? Well, she knows, you know, if she wants to go ahead and win, she's got to try and make a few birdies, and that means that she has to start making putts. The trouble is, when you start trying to make them and the urgency increases, the, they become even more difficult to, to hold. She knows that she's in the CME Group Tour Championship, so it's about the win for Allison Corpus now. It's time to take a closer look at a few significant holes here at Pelican Golf Club, presented by the Golf Course Superintendent Association of America, Morgan, they have reached the back now. Yeah, say that anything can happen here coming down the stretch, and anything did happen last year with Nelly coming to this hole with the lead, ended up making a triple bogey. Looks like a fairly benign short par four, but it is playing as the third most challenging hole today. It's a very shallow green little bit elevated from the players and a lot more wind today makes this wedge that much more difficult really have to control your spin it's quite easy it's only about four paces over that bunker so it's easy to spin it back into that deep face bunker and make very challenging up and down now the finishing hole here at pelican golf club the 18th hole that right bunker not in play the wind will make this tee shot a little bit more challenging but it's a fairly generous landing area this has been the hardest hole all week playing more than half a stroke over par today alone the whole location in its traditional back right brings all the water into play a and you might look and say oh i can bail out left but it is nearly an impossible shot from long left everything running away from you right towards the water so it'll Anything truly can happen on these last two, even the last three holes here 
at Pelican Golf Club. Fossey with a delicate putt at the 10th, up and then back down. That bobbled a little bit through the fringe, but well done. Tough putting into the grain, tough to judge just how much it will bobble. Lizette Salas broke a long victory drought earlier this season. She's playing the 16th. She had gone eight years without a victory, teamed up with Jennifer Cupcho to win the Dow Great Lakes Bay Invitational, playing well again. And she said that really fired her up. I mean, I think, too, the Sunday round that she had in Arkansas. I mean, she's putting together some really wonderful final rounds that have moved her well up the leaderboard. 11. Colo de Saganda safely away. It's her second from the fairway. She has 133. She's going with a wedge. Maybe a little breeze into her off the right. She's muttering away to herself. She's missed it in a tough spot there. She looked so in control to start the round and seems like she's making a few maybe mental errors here in the last few holes. Lexi for birdie at 10. That was that was a, a very tough putt, Morgan. It, it would, had a lot of break and a lot of speed. Yeah, you can see she was quite tentative with it, knowing that it is going to be fast. Looks like her putter's aim just a little bit left. Maybe catches it just in the bottom part of the putter, but right there it looks like it's going to go in, and then it just wiggles left. Maybe a touch of a misread because that did look like where she was lined up to start that putt. The third time this uh, summer she's had a back nine lead back to the KPMG Women's PGA Championship. Here in Grand uh, Rapids, Meyer as well. Second shot for Nelly at 11. So better than Carlo, just going to stay there. They put it right by that ridge on the left of the green. Cheeky little hole location from the officials. 13th. Second shot here for Gabby Lopez. Easier hole location here than Morgan. Yeah, this is a tough green, but where this hole is, it's not really around any of those large ridges. And playing a little bit downwind off the left, I think, would be a bit easier. You can get highlights, interviews, and features from all your favorite players. Check it out at LPGA.com. Lexi with the near make for birdie at 10, stays at 13 under. Overnight leader Allison Corpuz back in the fairway with her second shot to come. Oh, she's got a long way here. I've got 185 left to the hole. But really the number you want to think about, because I don't think she can carry the five iron she has out all the way to the flag and get it to stop with it being downwind. You've got to land it just on that top tier and get it to fall down the hill down towards the hole. That would be a shot of about, what are we looking at? 168 from here. Yeah, going on a little draw. I don't think we're all too worried about this part of her game, but what you can what you can tend to do is when you're missing putts, you start to press. And that's what she can't do. That um, got that unfortunate bounce that we were talking about off that downslope on the 10th, carried it about five paces too far. Lexi off the tee at 11. Yeah, pretty wide fairway, Tom. A little wind from right to left, and that's why she played it down the right-hand side. Okay. It'll be fine. Yeah, opens up the green a little from there. Bunkers to avoid, but they're out of range this week with the uh, golf course being soft. Let's go back to 10. And the second for Stark. Little story from here Stark only has 155 left. She's got a 9 iron out, ball, and a little bit of an upslope. I think she can land this closer to the hole. Yeah, this should come back as we saw Nelly's do. Yeah, that'll keep getting better. Lovely shot. She shot 63, which was 10 under to come from a couple back on Sunday to win in Northern Ireland. Was that Salas to get to seven under? Yeah. 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 
Hawks are into the top ten. Look over at the 11th. This is Nelly for birdie. Tom, this green is running away from her right here. Carlota just hit a beautiful chip shot to about six feet, and I think Nelly was watching that one too. Let's see if she learned anything. She give it enough pace. Evidently not one that she could get carried away with. Yeah, you've got to play smart out here. You've got to know when to play defensive golf and when to attack. And Nelly knows how to do that. It is going to be a thrilling finish here. It looks like it. Thompson and Cord are battling away at the top. The 11th, this was just a moment ago while we were away. Saganda for par. Yeah, that one is a good up and down for Galotto, who's dropped a few shots in the last several holes. And she knows how important that was, a little fist bump. Lexi just waiting back in the fairway. Yes. From the right hand. Right hand side yeah, of the I'm fairway. And that's what she's been doing for the bulk of this tournament, taking more club, gripping down on it. Yes, that's beautiful. The flag is just to the right of the bunker. And that, uh, green box behind the green. Yeah, playing it to the right because the slope kicks a little right to left and the wind is blowing right to left. Lexi lean going a too far right. A little too far. She missed her target. And short. Yeah, that uh, wasn't what she had envisioned. Did the wind get up there, Kay? Well, it could have switched around a little and hurt more than strictly right to left. Maybe just a little bit steep into that one. Let the face open just a hair. Birdie putt from Maya Stark at 10. Some left turn in this, and as it makes that left turn, it's downhill. within one. As Karen said, it breaks a little bit. Didn't quite play enough break. Looked like a good stroke. I love watching her reactions. You don't really have to wonder what she's thinking, do you? To 12. Still got that Lamborghini Urus on the line, but more to the point, a tournament trophy to be decided here in the next couple of hours. Nelly on the tee. made bogey in contention battling with Lexi in the final group that will give her a putt to tie the lead well, we saw Allison Corpus go way over the green at the tent this for par well displayed really great touch to have this opportunity for a par good looking stroke all right we finally made one got a putt to go in Karen yep. sometimes maybe that's all you need even though it's for par you see something go in the hole As we take you back to the 12th, Morgan, this is wide and shallow. Uh, it's 48 yards from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. There's a big dip in the middle separating the upper left side from the upper right side. The whole location today on the very back right, that upper right tier. It's a funky little hole. Well, Angela, we saw the fist pump from Carlota when she got the par putt to drop. Her idol is Rafa Nadal, and it's like she's had her serve broken here, and she's just trying to battle back. Yeah, Grant, that up and down on the last hole was, was extremely important. It was a great chip. Made the putt. Now she has a nine iron here. 143. Wind is helping off her right. Yeah, I think after missing those three putts in a row, Angela, that was a big one to not to stop the bleeding, so to speak. She can take dead aim with this one. Yo, 
puta. Oh, she's not happy with that one. In the water? That just, I mean, had to have come a little bit maybe from the inside, caught it heavy, a heavy little bit of an open-faced push. She doesn't, has not seemed comfortable since she stepped on that eighth tee. With the lead by two at one point. So Nelly's got a good look at birdie at 12 as we go back to 11. Yeah, Lexi, but a bit of work to do. And, and she's she's normally a pretty quick player, but she's taken some extra time on this. And I, I think just trying to get comfortable with the line, which overall should be a little left to right, coming off that rise in the green that's left of the flag. And then really tapping into the distance that she has done so well with throughout the week. This is a 20 pace putt from ball to hole. <laughs> she gave that a really good run. Yeah, her pace has been excellent all week so far. These players knew that these greens would challenge them. And I do think that there's a lot of similarities to next week's golf course as well. So the third shot for Saganda at 12. You know, Grant, I wonder, she's missed a couple of shots left, and we've seen that. And, you know, she usually likes to hit a fade. I'm wondering if she was just guarding against a little bit of wind coming off her right. She didn't want to lose another one left. That will be a long putt for Bogey as we go to 11. And Maya Stark on the tee. Back into the wind, Tom. Oh, heading left. It is, and if she has had a miss today with a driver, it's been to the left. You know, when I was with her on the range earlier, she was like, I'm trying to straighten it out. It's going both ways. I'm like, well, it looked pretty good from what we saw yesterday, but something in her head was telling her that maybe she's a little squirrely with the driver. A little blocked out. Well, time for a snack. Watch some golf. See Thompson here at the 11th for a par. And Tom, this is a defining putt for her. Um, she's been putting beautifully this week and in general this year. But as we know, the back nine for anybody, these putts get tougher. Can she continue to make these on the back nine on Sunday? So there was no. Did you see anything in the stroke? It didn't look that bad. I'm not sure if she was playing for a little right to left break or if she just pushed it. Hard to tell from our angle. Well, there's a tie at the top, but Nelly Corder does have a putt coming up at the 12th. And it's very much back and forth between Lexi and Nelly, the top two ranked Americans in the world. Let's go to 12. And a bogey putt for Seganda. a moment ago so four birdies to start her round and now four over par in her last five holes right, so we are live now Nelly Corda to take the lead for the first time today outright it's a great look should be pretty straight yeah, it's kind of the same thing she did on this hole yesterday it broke away from the water she didn't believe that same thing here on 12 again today. Just these greens are quite subtle. But I think it is interesting. You see players like Nelly and Lexi, who obviously play a lot on this type of grass, grew up on this type of grass. And then you see somebody like Maya Stark in there who actually said, I don't play. I, I don't. I pay no attention to different types of grasses. I think she may, as her career continues to progress. But it's an interesting attitude to have. Yeah, she's fun to watch. Tie at the top. Back at the 11th. This is Alison Corpus. From 151, ball is above her feet, which will help her kind of move this from right to left. 
try and get it close to that hole. And maybe try and capitalize on a little bit of momentum from that good par save at the previous hole. She, nice. she faded that, held it up into the wind. Oh, beautiful shot. Yeah. She's such an even keel player, Karen. I don't know that obviously she wants to make more putts, but she doesn't seem to look too flustered. Not one bit. Really cool out here. Stark shot. She is blocked out by that little pine tree that's right ahead of her. She's going to have to keep this one low. She's got 128. She's going to play this with a 7 iron. And where this ball's going to land short to the green, it might want to kick it to the right. So she's going to try and get a bit of draw spin on it. Oh, I think that just clipped a little branch. Yeah, those low ones. Didn't look like it took all that much off of it, but just enough as a tough spot to miss it there. Yeah, there's so much room out to the right on that 11th hole. But if you go down the left, you bring these trees into play. And let's just watch and see if that did clip the branch. I think it did. Yeah, just a few of those uh, pine leaves. Is that what you call them? Well, we've had 11 Rolex first time winners, but let's look at the rookies to win. Uh, during the 2022 season. Ty Titical has had an amazing year. A couple of victories that Maya Stark, we talked about the fact that she was a member of the Ladies European Tour and took LPGA membership with that victory in Northern Ireland. And then Ayaka Fudaway, also a winner during the swing through Europe for the LPGA this summer. She won in Scotland. Well, coming off her first bogey of the day. Lexi Thompson tied for the lead. She tees it up at the 12th. What do you think? I have to take some off. No, I like normal. Right at it. It's 40 pin? Correct. I think uh, in this instance, it's fortunate for Lexi to go second. And she just got to watch Maria Fossi hit a nine iron successfully just past the flag sticks. So they're both. Um, they basically hit at the same distance, so Lexi knows this nine iron is good. Wind is helping right to left. So just has to ensure she doesn't pull it at all because the wind will exaggerate that. Looks like a pretty good line. Is it enough? Or is it gonna oh, stay? No. Oh no. Oh no. That's gonna go back in the water. Gone. Wow, and that was on the green. She needed another foot, and that would have stayed. She can drop yes. up there just short of the green. It's a red line, not yellow. This game can be so cruel. If that, that carried probably a half a pace more, it would have been safe. Do you think that was wrong club, a little miss strike, or a touch of wind there, Kay? I think it was a little bit of a miss strike, or just taking a little bit off it, because it was pl it was plenty of club. We have seen that all week, really all three years we played here. Balls finding the green and then finding the water. And we've talked about needing to control your spin on these soft greens. I mean, that is. Absolutely inches from being just below the hole with a 10 footer for birdie. And no one spins it more than Lexi. So she'll be pitching for par. We'll see what happens if you take it to the 11th. And Maya Stark a moment ago, third shot. Looking for oh. that low checky one, but pitched on that it sprinkler did. head. It pitched on the sprinkler head, took all the spin off it. How unlucky was that? Oh, my word. We go from watching Lexi spin it back into the water to, to that. A lot of bad oh. luck here, these last couple of shots. But, I mean, I don't know if she knew that was there or not or thought that she needed to carry that. The odds of hitting that are so small. I think she knew that they were there. She walked up to the green, Morgan, but I think she just carried, she didn't carry it far enough. I think her plan had to be to land it on the green. She does generate enough spin, and I think she was thinking of getting it to pitch about three yards onto the green, so she missed her target a little bit. See how, if this rattles her at all. 
Hasn't wasted any time getting here, though. Oh, wow, great, great look. Yeah, it's going to be a bogey, though, for Stark, and you have to go back to the tee shot, really. I mean, she got unlucky with the third. She thought she had it as well. She got unlucky with the third shot, but the mistake came from the tee. So this one to drop just the one shot here. So she's going to fall back to 10 under par. A couple behind Nelly Corder. Lexi is uh, in trouble there at the 12th. So Nelly looking likely to have the lead on her own here shortly. Over at the 18th, Hannah Green, number 18 in the race to the CME Globe, having a terrific year. Hasn't missed a cut all season. That's going to get better. That's going to be a putt for a 65. She's been so close. It's hard to believe that she hasn't won this season. She's given herself a lot of opportunities and played really solid golf. Uh, some corpus now for a birdie at 11. And she would have had a good idea on the, the line from watching Stark's ball roll up towards the hole. Let's see if she can get that good roll that she played on the previous hole and put it into action on this one too and get herself back to where she started the day at. Yep. So she's a 10 under par. Let's see if Boos still in with a chance here. Big smile. Drive by Nelly at the 13th. This is her second. She has 139 downwind. She has a wedge in her hand. We'll definitely go at the hole here. Yeah. When she twirls the club in her hand, you know it's a good shot, but that was a delayed twirl, so I couldn't quite tell. Maybe she didn't quite know until it was of his ball flight. Nelly's about to be in the lead alone, it would appear. Hannah Green is going to have this to tie Morgan Metro for the best score among those who are finished. Pay attention to how much that four footer just broke for Hannah. That's what the leaders are going to face. Pretty severe hole location there on 18. Lexi had two putts between four and five feet, one in regulation, one in the playoff them both and lost to Nelly. 13. Saganda second. Yeah. Give her a chance. And it's been costly over the last five holes for the Spaniard. And costly tee shot for Lexi that spun back in the water. This is her third at the par 3 12th. And she's pulled out putter. I'm all for putting, usually off the greens, but this, in this case, it's so steep. But Morgan, wow, that was impressive. She's comfortable with that club off these putting surfaces, and it sure paid off there. Yeah, I don't know that that would be a club I would have even thought to use in that situation, but it's what Lexi practices, and like you said, Kay, what she's comfortable with. Very well done. How big of an advantage to be able to hit a third shot from either by the green? A huge advantage, and, you know, minimizes the damage you think you know Carlotta didn't carry had to go all the way back to the tee and man really just sneaking away with the bogey as opposed to a bigger number on the card Lexi will be there next week as an incredible LPGA season leads to the c and &E group tour championship the largest single prize in women's golf two million dollars to the winner our coverage begins Thursday at 3 o'clock Eastern Time on Golf Channel at Peacock. Terry Gannon comes in to join the crew. Let's take you to the 15th. This is a moment ago. You, Lou, just talked about how stressful this week is because of her position in the race to the CME Globe. You saw 98. She's one over par today. And 
may well be back to level par pretty quickly, but she is projected 96th, so she is okay for the top 100 and keeping her playing privileges for next season. Let's take a look at that race to the CME Globe because we're also watching the top 63. The reason that it's 63, it was top 60, uh, but three players have not entered for next week, so we've moved it down to 63rd. Uh, Ari Jutanagan is hanging on despite a miscut. Stacy Lewis uh, didn't finish well today at 18, but she's still in. And uh, looking forward to making that drive. Maria Farsi has uh, fallen out with the way she's played today. We'll keep an eye on Farsi. Talking about driving down to uh, Naples, Grant. How quickly could you get there in the Lamborghini Urus? Final pair with two more chances, Morgan. Drive away in style. You know, it's something that I think every single player, and especially maybe the caddy even mm -hmm. as well, has thought about on this tee. But if there's a few people to not, it might be these last couple groups. There's a, there's a lot on the line, more than just a Lamborghini. Corpus with the par save at 10. Karen backing it up with the birdie at 11. Yeah, it's almost like finally when the first putt went in, it was like just a... So, okay, there is a still a hole there. I can still make parts. I'm okay. Everything's okay. She has an eight iron in her hand here. And uh, she has been playing that little patented fade, so expect this one to be held up a little bit into that wind. I don't think the wind bothers Alison Corpus from Hawaii very much, does it? Well, if anybody's used to it, she should be. That is for sure. Also, the tempo of a swing helps with the uh, with the wind as well. Sit. A little Sit. bit of a tug. Yeah, it got that turning over with the wind too. Just Almost a natural reaction watching where Lexi was. Yeah, because they would have been standing there, definitely paying attention, and she'll get a drop from the grandstand. Two good looks here. First of all, Saganda. And that gets her to nine under, takes a little bit of the sting off those uh, two bogeys and a double. At the moment, she's got a lot of work to do to catch the player. She's playing alongside Nelly Corder, who's still got a good chance, but we will go to 12. And the tee shot for Maya Stark. Aggressive player, expect her to take this one right at it. Wind heavily from the right, though. Got to try and hold it just a little bit to stop that wind from taking it too much. You said it, Morgan. She uh, she tells you what she's thinking. Yeah, that might funnel down a little bit. Oh no, it's staying. That'll be just fine. Not, uh, but I think a little bit of a compensation from watching what happened to Lexi and the group in front of them. And you can play it from there. Thirteen is Nelly for birdie. Oh, it was a great look. It was the perfect spot to leave it. And Nelly gets to 13 under par. She has a two-shot lead, trying to successfully defend here at the Pelican Women's Championship. Yeah. I mean, honestly, even if you landed it at, like, 40, it's into the green right in there, so it should chew pretty decent. Second of 13 for Lexi Thompson. Do you think it's a pretty solid one? Yes, I like it. This wind is helping again, and she's got a wedge in her hand. As you heard, this 142 going to play quite a bit less. She's she's looking to land this about 138. He said it's going to chew. That's golf terminology that I haven't heard too often. Yeah, stop it. Stop it quickly, right? That. She nearly holds it on 18. What in round one? Nearly holds that one. What a bounce back. Yeah, two bogeys, and that'll be a birdie for Lexi. So she'll get back to 12 under par within one of the lead. Let's take a look at that again. It was just munching on that flag, wasn't it? Controlled pitching wedge, it looks like here from the bottom of her club. And yeah. I mean, beautifully judged with distance control.
Back at the 12th, some tough spots here, starting with Corpus. Well, she's dropped it into some into the longer grass. I mean, it's a little bit fluffy back here, but it allows her the, the opportunity to feel like she can slide the, the club head under the ball and get this to get a little bit higher in the air and land on that down slope and trickle down towards the hole. Is she on any kind of a down slope here, Karen? It's a smidge of one. It's not a huge, huge down slope that, that would cause her too much of an issue. Does she have to worry about beyond the hole at all? No. Okay. Well, I spoke too soon. Okay. Exhale now. Reasonable effort there. A little bit of a squirrely lie. Third playing of the Pelican Women's Championship. Special thanks to Marcy Doyle, the executive director, Chris Core, the core superintendent, Terry Canelli, director of grounds, their entire team. Justin Sheehan, the director of golf, the coach for Brittany Altamari and Elizabeth Sokol and some other players on the LPGA Tour. They roll out the red carpet here, and they have been treated to two and uh, almost three. Incredible tournaments. Say Young Kim won it a couple of years ago. Nelly in a playoff last year with three other luminaries of the LPGA. And now 22 year old Maya Stark, a star on the rise. She's got a tough putt here, Karen. How tough? Well, it's downhill to the hole. It's going to break to the right. But the initial feeling that's going to be in her feet right now is that there's a bit of an upslope to start with. But you need to put all that aside knowing that this is going to be really quick. Carlotta had a similar putt and it didn't break to the right. It kind of hung out left. Pretty good effort. If that had a little bit less pace, I think that would have fallen in on that left side. She's not going to uh, take the strike, is she? She's going to go out swinging. So a little bit of separation with Lexi having this tap in to get to 12 under Nelly at 13 and then Stark and Corpus both struggling for par at 12. Well this is an adrenaline shot and a shot of extra confidence that she badly needed. Really well done. Got par five coming up at the 14th where the tee has moved up. But I think what's going to be really the uh, the holes that, that we need to watch 17 and 18 17 is tough today with that whole location then 18 always difficult with the water lurking in a very tricky green so no matter where things stand as we learned last year anything can really happen over the final two holes remember Nelly made a seven at the 17th last year a couple of one putts in a row for Allison Corpus one for par one for birdie and this big one for par the 12th you have to think that this one, you know, having just watched Stark's putt sort of break a little bit right as it got to the hole, this one has to go to the left. It's much more comfortable watching the ball move left if you're a right-handed player. Oh, just hit it through everything. Just looks a little quick on transition. Up at the 18th, as we watch players vying for a trophy, there's also the LPGA Tour card at stake. Jarena Mendoza in the water at 18. That was for bogey. Came in number 104. You see in the points list. Was at number 100 when she got to the 18th. But will drop at least two. She's never lost her card. 11 seasons on tour. Back at the 12th and Stark eyeing this putt for par. Plays her putts pretty firm, even these short ones. She's very confident over them, so don't expect her to give too much away here in terms of break. Wow. You said she's fearless, Morgan. It was not a tap in by any means. She's loving it. Yeah, and that, and that was considering what we did see down the stretch when she was in contention in Portland, missed a few putts of that length. So I think that was very important putt for her. 
Yep, into right to left. 250 bucket. 250 is the back edge, too. Big drop off off the back of this 14th green. Here's Nelly leading it by one. I love the aggressive, aggressive play. Glad she's going at this. She has plenty of length to get there. Coming. Haven't seen her hit one like that yet today. Yeah, that'll leave a little bit of an awkward pitch. I don't think it's the end of the world from over there. Harder than what she had at seven, you think, when she got it up and down? I do think more challenging than what she had at seven, but but similar. Thirteen. It's Maria Fossey for birdie. Tom, this is actually for two birdies in a row. And to tie Lexi on the hole. Yeah. <laughs> Don't give up on Maria quite yet. Well, she's got that ability to just suddenly turn it on, and that's what she's going to need to do. If she's going to have a chance to win here. The good news is that projects Maria inside uh, the CME Group Tour Championship for next week, which she's in a tie for fourth. Behind it, 52 back in. 49 total. This is our leader, Nellie Corda, with the third shot at the par 5 14th. Angela Stanford is down there watching. She has 49 yards. The ball sitting up nicely in the rough. And I would say half of that 49 yards is green. So she has a lot of green to work with. Nice lie. She generate a little bit of spin on this shot, Ange? I'm not sure she needs to. If she wants it to roll out, it, it's okay if, it, if she lets it roll a little bit. Can't go along. Maybe guarding against it? Don't know. Yeah, there's only three paces beyond that flag, and it goes, it is an infinity green. Way goes way down and over. A tap in birdie at the 13th, and now Lexi on the tee at 14th. And she sees nothing but opportunity on this tee in this hole, and that was crushed. She'll easily be able to get to the green from there. It is time to, for one last time, update the Aon Risk Reward Challenge for 2022. All season long, players would take their two best scores on that week's Aon Risk Reward Challenge. Old Minji Lee at the Cognizant Founders Cup made an eagle at the 12th in round two, and then in round three, she did it again en route to the first of two victories in May and June. And after it all sorted out, Minji Lee, though she's not playing this week, yesterday clinched that million dollar first prize joining Hannah Green and Carlota Saganda. So Minji gets her second seven figure paycheck of the season after winning 1.8 at the U.S. Women's Open. 13. Got two million to the winner next week. So she could do it again. Yeah, yeah she could. She'll be a favorite. Corpus second at 13. Ball is a bit above her feet here and on a bit of a downslope with this being downwind, but that whole location, pretty inviting for a, a shot of this length. Going with a little fade into this flag. Stay there, I don't want to go too far by. Gives herself a good look. Important stretch coming up for Maya Stark. This is a hole where she can take advantage of the same on the next as well, Karen. Yeah, definitely has a, a good bit of distance behind her to, to do that. She's only got 130 left here. This is just a pitching wedge and does have a little bit of an upslope too. So that's a nice little advantage when you have a downwind shot. Just got to keep some smooth rhythm with this. I love that one last long look that she takes at the hole before she pulls the club back. Whoa. Oh, did she catch that heavy? Heavy, yep. Well, you can't afford to make mistakes like that coming down the stretch on a Sunday if you're in contention. And Maya could pay the price here on a hole that has yielded 
birdies for those players at the top of the leaderboard. And they have come out across West Florida here to watch the world's best in women's golf. And, uh, Angela as veteran of two decades of the LPGA Tour. Just wonder as you watch Carlota Saganda here. We saw her. She was the first winner of that Aeon Risk Reward Challenge. A seven-figure check. Just doesn't happen in women's golf very often. Just a dozen or so times. Either a tournament first prize or this Aeon Risk Reward Challenge. Yeah, Grant. It's just it's so great to watch women's golf and where it's going. And you know, players are being rewarded for their great play. And as you can tell with all the fans out here, people. They love watching women's golf right now. Oh, that was a really good looking stroke from Carlotta. Just slid off at the end. She's a little hot under the collar right now, I think. Knows that she's made a few mistakes that might cost her that opportunity to end her victory drought. It's incredible. We've had three players Saganda, Lexi, and Nelly. Who have had two shot leads today. Nelly to go back up by two. Second shot got away from her. Yeah, just a squirrely shot with her fairway wood there. That putt looked like it was left all the way. I'm not sure if that was a misread or a pull, but it didn't look like it started maybe on the line that she wanted. Opportunity for Lexi and the pair right behind her as we go to 13. And now Maya Stark's third. Pretty simple tip here. I mean, she's can use lots of green. It is into the upslope. So she should be able to control this one nicely. It's for it to go, but it's going to be a four. She'll remain 10 under. Yes, Phoenix is right cleared left. at 14. Yeah, Lexi sure. Thompson. Back right. off the map with the tap in birdie at 13. And a chance here, one back. Second shot at the par five. She had three wood out momentarily, but going instead with this two iron that she strikes very well and, some, and can get some decent height on it. Wind hurting from the right. 202 to the front, 231 to the hole. Okay. If she goes at the flagstick, she's going to have to ensure she carries the bunker that's right on line. Yeah, I would think that that three wood would probably be too much for her. K would end up over the yeah. back of the green, which is the only place you can't hit it. Yeah, it'd come in too hot. But I think that she knows what now the wind is. There's no chance it's the other one, right? I mean, that brings back in the play. Nicholas confirming that three woods just going to put you over this green and there's only three paces behind this whole location. She'd be better off ending up in the front bunker. She's probably one of the only players out here with this club in her bag, Kay. Yeah, it's carving a little bit from left to right, trying to miss the bunker on the left. And that wasn't probably her best strike, but that's not a bad leave. I feel like maybe just a little bit of a gap in her bag. Honestly, uh, more than anything, the two iron probably going to come up a little, sh little bit short, and the three wood going to be a little bit long. But she played to the minimize the damage there and give herself the best opportunity to make birdie. Over at the 13th, Maya Stark has already tapped in her four, so this is a three here for Corpus. Downhill putt, Tom, and it's going to break left. And sometimes. Uh... I like a downhill pup. All you have to do is just think about get started on your chosen line, and almost the speed takes care of itself. Oh, that's very softly hit. Don't think it's going to hold this line, no. Yeah, like maybe a little bit of a wish she putt. She just doesn't look that confident Mostly over the down. ball. 
Top Tracer technology on the 15th tee. We can watch uh, Nelly's tee shot. She has a seven iron, Tom. It's all about where this lands. I've been watching tee shots today. Yeah, good golf swing. And it landed in a good spot. We've seen some players charge the ball through the back of the green, pitching on the down slope. A bit short, it can stop short of the green. But that's a good tee shot from Nelly, and a birdie chance coming up. Today's coverage is brought to you by Raymond James, tailored wealth management, banking, and capital market solutions for clients' unique needs. By Wynn Grips, the best grips in golf. And by CME Group, where risk meets opportunity. One off the lead, a third shot at the par 5, 14 for Lexi Thompson. Chipping off a really tight lie. 35 paces to the hole. She is looking at a spot to land this about three quarters of the, the way on, and hopefully it bounces a couple times and then sits down. You can really tell from our camera angle that infinity edge behind this hole location. Nicely done. So that to tie the lead. The last victory for Lexi Thompson on the LPGA Tour came at the ShopRite LPGA Classic. It was the week after the U.S. Women's Open in 2019 when she was runner-up. She was chasing John and Lee six on that Sunday. And on the 18th for Eagle. The player who's made more over the last decade than anyone on the LPGA Tour got that one to drop. It was her 11th title in her first eight years on the LPGA Tour. It's now been 60 starts for Lexi since her last victory that summer down the shore. With a win, it would be her 12th. As you see, the first since 2019. She'd moved to fifth in the race to the CME Globe, but Morgan, she did win just a month ago in the Ladies European Tour. She beat Nelly, she beat Brooke Henderson. It was a loaded field, and she got it done on Sunday in New York City. And she said that gave her a lot of confidence coming into this week. She said she's worked exceptionally hard the last three weeks, even since that victory, to just tighten up those few things, and she looks very solid this week. She's at the 17th. Gabby Lopez, maybe that's the spot. Believe, uh, to leave it below the hole there. Birdie at uh, 17. Let's go back over to 14. And Maria Fossey for Eagle. A healthy 50 footer, Grant, but it's possible. Left to right breaking putt. Made one here on Friday in the opening round. She did. The one she made on Friday was only a 10 footer. Yeah. That was a lot lower statistic chance of making it. And she's trying to move into the top 63 and punch a ticket to next week's CME Group Tour Championship. Nelly quarter now for a birdie at 15. She is putting from the proper spot on the screen. Should move a little right to left and then straighten up at the hole. Didn't quite give it enough. Main at 13 under par, just ahead here for the time being at the Pelican Women's Championship. Three to play, 16's a birdie chance, and then tricky holes at 17 and 18 to come. Fossey with the comebacker for birdie. All kinds of star potential, Morgan, for Maria Fossey. Yeah, she's really playing some solid golf, especially uh, as of late. It's been fun to watch her lean into a little bit more confidence out here, Kay. Yeah, she's been knocked down a few rungs, but she's kept a, a, a positive outlook, and she certainly has all the tools to be a multiple winner out here on tour. Oh. 
Swiss. Wow. Only two under on the par fives this week, Morgan. And for someone of her length, who's number one in distance, she averages 270 yards off the tee. That's that's really unacceptable. Especially when one of those holes was an eagle right here. She switched to a, a claw putting grip in the middle of the round last week in Japan. So in addition to all that's on the line for these players, every birdie this week is going to result in a donation of $50 to Bay Cares Angel Eye Health System at Meese Countryside Hospital. And this to tie the lead for Lexi Thompson. Well, Lexi's made 14 birdies and an eagle so far this week with the four bogeys. I don't see a whole lot in this putt, Morgan. It's just a matter of confidently striking it and uh, making sure she puts through it because it's a little bit uphill. She's been solid from this distance. Let's see. She just will not give up. A bogey at 11, a bogey in the water at 12. Back to back birdies at 13 and 14. Is this the day that Lexi Thompson breaks back into the winter circle? She's tied with Nelly. behind the green at 15 back towards the tee here in the final round of the Pelican Women's Championship and we have a thriller a battle between the top two Americans in the world and we've got our top tracer technology for Lexi Thompson's tee shot yeah, Lexi fighting hard with those two birdies in a row the last two holes going with the same club Nelly used just about 15 minutes ago seven iron looking good oh wow just coming up a little short. Yeah, talked about that a little earlier. It's just where the ball pitches, and we've seen it watching at 15 all day. It pitches there, it stops, it comes back a little bit. But if you get too aggressive, it can bound all the way to the back of the green. So it's very tricky. Nelly handled it well. Let's go to 16. And Nelly's tee shot. It needs to keep it up the left side of the fairway. The bunker comes into play at 251. We missed one fairway this week. And that'll be just fine. Hole location today. Very accessible in the front center of that green on 16. Now Maria Fossey back on the par three. She's grabbed one more club going with six iron after seeing Lexi's shot come up short of the green. And I think the difference most likely is the fact that it's a lot cooler and drier today than it was the last couple days. Ball just not flying quite as far. Get up. Get up. Get thin, maybe. She didn't like it. She knew it right away. So Maria Farsi is one of those players battling to get into next week's CME Group Tour Championship. Take a look at the projected standings. So Farsi at the moment inside the mark, making a move today. Area Jutanagan, who missed the cut, could be the player that slips uh, out. And Jenny Shin wasn't able to get it done. Jenny Shin, by the way, uh, finished with a couple of bogeys uh, in her bid. To, uh, to get inside that top 63. She birded 16 and then bogeyed 17 and 18 in her round uh, of one under par. Well, Karen, after what we saw last year late here, uh, let's not count out Stark and uh, Corpus. No, I mean, anything could absolutely happen. But to do so, you'd think that a birdie here would be a must, and that just checks so quick. Nobody's really giving that as much as they need to get it all the way back to that hole location, knowing what's beyond the flag. Everybody a little bit defensive on what you would consider to be a birdie hole for sure. 
That'll be a putt to get to 11 under. She's tied with Gabby Lopez at minus 10. Corpus playing with her. She's nine under. This is the 16th, and there's that whole location Morgan mentioned. Okay. Oh, yeah, playing with Carlo de Segunda. Bogey at 15 for Segunda, back to eight under. Grant, she has 166. She decided to go with the three wood off the tee. Uh, I was talking about that bunker that comes into play up the right side and um, I think Nelly is well in front of her, will only have 100 yards. And, you know, I, I like that aggressive style coming down the, the last nine holes on Sunday. I think it's interesting what we've seen from Carlotta. Once she did get that lead, really made some seriously uncharacteristic mistakes that have to chalk up to being a little bit more mental than anything. Four straight birdies to start the round. She had a two shot lead. Go back to 14, the birdie putt for Maya Stark. This was going to move to the right, uphill. Got to keep your speed up. Similar to what we saw from Maria Fossey from the other side of the hole. It just tremendous amount of break around that hole location. At 16, Nelly. Grant, she has 109 yards and from a perfect angle. I feel like Nelly, one, is very much in control, but two, learned a lot from what happened here last year. And I don't expect to see her make the same mistake that she did last year. I think she is just looks so much in control out there and knows what happened and I think it's just really mentally tough. Huge putt for Corpus at 14. It is and this one is uh, as straightforward as you could probably get up the hill. Oh. Yeah just been the story of her day today Karen. One shot lead when the round began, but now four back with four to go to 15. And Lexi out with the putter from off the green. And Tom, initially where her ball ended up, there were two old ball marks that would have been in her line and a problem to deal with. But because they're still playing lift clean in place, she could move her ball a little more to the right and has a clear runway. Fossey's birdie bid came up short and that also a little short, but I think she'll take that tap in three. Yeah. Another very good speed effort from off the green. Shows just what kind of growing up on this type of grass and practicing a lot on Bermuda. She's very comfortable with that shot. Yeah, it's the case for the two players at the top of the leaderboard. Both grew up in Florida. Back at the 15th hole here at Pelican Golf Club in Bel Air, Florida, in the Tampa Bay area of the state. A little cooler today. A little more breeze for this final round, Karen. It certainly is. Um, much different from, from yesterday, where it was really hot and humid out here, but pretty cool right now. Stark's got a seven iron as well, and I haven't heard what. Lexi and Nelly hit in front. She's going to have to really get hold of this one. Too far right. 
Ooh, we got a nice little kick. Mm. We saw Lexi come up short and the ball just died. That one hopped forward and it's actually going to be okay. She's got a putt for a birdie. Ready to go. Yeah, six arm for Anderson. Not quite as long as Meyer off the tee. And into the green with her iron, so. But I think that right side is the, is the way to go, Tom. Get it to land right at the flag, and you get that little hop on. You're not pitching into an upslope like Lexi did, where it stopped. Tom, you never truly know how you're going to react, you know, when you get into this position and you're in the final group, and the chance to win for the first time, and it's all such a learning curve and, and how your body reacts, and good-looking shot. Yeah, that one's worked out very well. Yeah, and going up against uh, the best players, really, or some of the most famous players on the tour, Lexi Thompson and Nelly Porter. Yes, and the only player over par for the day in the top 20, but a chance to get it back to level. Gabby Lopez, we saw the birdie at 17. This is her second of the 18th. She tied for third. Well, it's actually the miss today on 18 is slightly right of that hole location. It's a very good shot. See Thompson in with her par at 15. Nelly Corda has a pretty putt at 16 to come in a moment. It is the final Sunday of the LPGA Tour's regular season. The Tampa St. Pete area. It is the Pelican Women's Championship. We are coming down to the wire, much like we did last year with Lexi Thompson and Nelly Corda vying for their first victories of the season. Grant Boone, Morgan Pressel, Tom Abbott, Kay Cockwell, Karen Stupples, and Angela Stanford watching Nelly for the lead. And Nelly Corda. The lead by one big drive, found the fairway, took advantage. Uh, she has just played flawless golf today, been so in control of her golf ball. Just a moment ago on the tee, Lexi Thompson with an iron. Yeah, opting to lay up well short of the bunker on the right and the pine trees that come in tightly on the left. The lever more yardage in, but that was a smart play. And we just saw Nelly hit nearly like a flip wedge into this green. Big advantage. It is an accessible hole location though today. Back over at the 15th, Maya Stark has uh, a birdie putt to come. Four behind now, so uh, she's got to really make this one, Karen. Absolutely she does. Um, she wants to, to have a chance at that trophy. It's a big scoreboard behind this green as well, so. If she was looking to see where she was, there's uh, no excuse for not looking right now, just to figure out what you've got to do. I think she's the kind of player that would absolutely relish uh, the thought of, of having to try and make something happen. I think she's um, one of those players that would enjoy that. It's a little bit of distance on this part. Quickly go over to 16. And let's see if Lexi's strategy pays off her approach here at the par four. And curious, this is exactly the same yardage and wind condition, or close to the same wind condition she had on the sixth hole. This 159 yards, playing it more like a 130, 35 yard shot. Going with the nine iron. Wind helping left to right. Dialed that in pretty nicely for distance. 
Only the quick putt down the hill. That was a big nine iron. Huge. That putt to time Nelly, who's off to the 17th hole. As we go back to 15. And Maya Stark for the two. And she did back off Tom and made a little readjustment of the line on her ball. So once she got over it, she realized that she hadn't given it enough break. And my goodness. Still didn't give it quite enough break. Nope. I do think you're right, though, Karen. I think she relishes being in this position and, and enjoys the moment. Her fiery, competitive nature really thrives in these situations. Let's go to the tee at the 17th and Nelly Corder. Yeah, good swing. So this hole, oh, I was going to say 100% of the field have hit the fairway here, and it's still 100% despite the sprinkler head. We never see anybody hit a sprinkler head. We've seen it twice in our broadcast today. Yeah, and she's got a little bit of extra distance there. Whether that will affect the yardage she has in with her second and whether it's a number that she likes or doesn't like, we will find out. But... 100% of the field have hit the fairway at 17. It's the fourth hardest hole on the golf course, so it gets very difficult when you're playing that second shot. At the 16th hole, Lexi Thompson with a putt for birdie to tie the lead. And it's for her third birdie in the last three holes, or four holes. Kind of a tough one to read. I don't see a whole lot in it. It is downhill. Oh, and she she guarded too much against the speed on that one, Morgan. Yeah, it's a, some of these hole locations, if you get above the hole around this golf course, cutting down grain, we've seen it all week, players being a little bit tentative. Well, we have a moment. We want to remind you that LPGA USGA girls golf is on a mission to change the face of the game join the movement and inspire the next generation of LPGA tour players help make little girls big dreams come true at girlsgolf.org we're going to know you're an alum alumna of that program a lot of autographs Soon to come for these players, Maria Fassi, or for these youngsters, Maria Fassi and Lexi sign more than anybody. I saw Nelly yesterday after the round signing a bunch of autographs for some youngsters. Listen to Allison Corpus talking about what you meant to her, meeting her when you were playing in Hawaii and she was just a youngster. Here's Fassi for birdie at 16. How about this comeback? And it could be enough to get her into CME. At this moment, it, it certainly is. And just wonderful fight back. By the way, she's tied for third. Still, I'm, it's an outside chance to do something special. 17. It's a feely one, but I think it's playing at least low 90s. And it's going to be right to left, 73, 78. I like like a 92 shot. You got it. Come on. That is a smart conversation from her caddy. Her caddy is telling her the correct thing to do in this moment. She has plenty of green behind this flag. The only place she can't miss it is short. Club 12, does she love it? Yeah, she should love it. <laughs> Just needs to stay there. There is a bit of slope back towards the front of the green, but. Not enough momentum on the ball to drag it back. Andrew, she put a new ball in play there, we understand? She did. She called the official over and showed him her golf ball, hit a sprinkler head, and apparently it was not round anymore, so she put a new ball in play. All within the rules. You've got to keep an eye on the golf ball. You don't want to be playing with a golf ball that's out of shape and the pros would uh, know that right away looking down at the ball seeing a mark or seeing that massive bounce in the fairway and thinking what happened there now Farsi is going to go not with the driver here 
Yeah, that's that's interesting. Uh, this whole plane back into the wind, but it's it's really not a long hole as you talked about, but perhaps thinking instead of getting it the proper distance where she has a comfortable number for her second. It was the same club she actually pulled in the first round and she hit a little bit of a low left hook that bounced out of the fairway bunker. Ended up making birdie. And this right. hugging the left hand side may not clear. Yeah, bounces right into it. I think you might stay. Sure, what she was thinking there. Stay where? Stay in the bunker. Shot 62 on uh, Friday in the first round of Maria Farsi. Remember, the first round on Thursday was washed out, so that's why it's a 54 hole event. We had the tropical storm come through. And we did great work just to get the golf course playable. It's pretty incredible that we've managed to get three rounds in. Now, Lexi, has she got the driver out here? She does. Um, and I like this play better. I, I really, I don't know why Fosse would go with a three wood because this is a pretty wide open fairway and you can aim down at the left edge of that right bunker all day and not get it there. I mean, Tom, I just want to note that since you said that 100% of the field hit this fairway, two players have now missed this fairway. Yeah, Colotta Seganda missed the fairway as I was saying that as we went to break. Right. Now, Lexi. Lexi's going to find it. It's in good shape. So Nelly has a chance for a birdie up on the green at 17. Lexi may need to match her. Stay within one. Back on the 17th with Nelly Corder putting for birdie and how good of a look is this one, Angela? This is a great look. It's right up at it. I feel like it's going to be fairly straight. She's made a lot of these putts today. Oh, right in there. Just dead weight. We talked about it earlier in the week, Morgan, how she likes to dribble the ball in the hole, and that was a great example. And you know that She's talked about what she did here last year on Sunday in her pre-round press conference, and that was on her mind. I think this birdie meant maybe even a little bit more for her this year. Last year, she hit over the green and kind of duffed it into the bunker and then knocked it out of the green and three-putted from short range. What a different story it is this year. And Nelly has a two-shot lead walking to the final hole and let's take a look at what would happen with a win she would get back to number one in the rolex world rankings projected to move to 15th in the race to the cme globe remember she missed a good portion of the early part of the season and it would be win number eight so we could see an american back to being the world number one here and when the like rankings come out tomorrow Looks like maybe a little bit of icing here on the 18th tee. It's not the kind of hole where you want a long wait. Especially not if you're Nelly. She likes to play quickly. Final pair at 16, Allison Corpus. Well, this is a really good looking shot here and one that she will definitely enjoy. That was just a moment ago. Looking for her second birdie of the day. To 17. And Farsi from the bunker. Yeah, Tom, just not far from the edge of the bunker, but it is a good line, and she can hit this right down the line, the, the, the trough line that the ball made rolling into the bunker. Oh, caught it really heavy. So easy to do from there. That's a really difficult shot, playing a fairway bunker shot with the leading edge like that. And it's going to be a really hard up and down upcoming. Yeah, there's no green to work with. Pretty much straight. Big mistake off the tee. At the 16th, Maya Stark's third. Yeah, but not been great with her approach shots today and having to get up and down from this bunker. And that's a nice one. Here it has come down to just Nelly and Lexi. 
I mean, if you fly to 95, you should down some. I know, but it's imagine it's going to be pretty full. You know? Like the 95 is close to full. Full for For that wedge. Oh, all right. For the 55. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I know what you're talking about. I think you were pitching which thing. Thank you. But all right. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Um, 88. 88, I got to land. I mean, this is a good... Oh, uh, yeah. Straight in? Straight in. statement and that's the re-emphasizing that going a little bit past this flag stick is okay there's plenty of room back there using this 55 degree wedge that she likes to hit 100 105 yards yeah i like this taking a little bit more club as opposed to hitting the absolute max with one less club and having too much spin on the ball into the wind that was what she was looking for oh goodness maybe too much spin yeah, there's a slope there. Oh, no, it looked Not like sure. that would be okay. It's got to sit down. It can come back even more. Goodness. I These mean, greens in places are just diabolical. I mean, what happened to her on the 12th hole, hitting it, spinning it back off the green into the water, and then here, that was... I mean, you know that you have to work on your spin. She just didn't quite carry it far enough. It's the similar to what happened on 12, just a few feet short of where she needed to be. Yeah, that's just that 17th green, it doesn't look that severe, but that slope is subtle. And once you get some spin on the ball, it just comes all the way back off the green. Corpus for birdie at 16. I think this will be a really solid learning experience for Allison, being in this position in the final group with a lot of pressure and you know, it hasn't been her day, but she's fought hard. It has been Nellie's day. She is seven under on a round, bogey free, and this birdie at the 17th has given her again a two shot lead. And this is the shot that Lexi Thompson faces for her third. She's two behind. Not easy. And, and you could just see kind of the look of disbelief on her face watching that thing suck back off the green. And she knew now this is not a straightforward chip shot that you can think about making. It's, I mean, it could possibly go in. But the big thing is she loves to putt from off the putting surface and not able to do it because she has to carry this over the edge of the bunker, just right at the edge of the bunker. And she hasn't chipped in a while. I guess she had a pitch shot on the 14th hole, but that was more like a 30 yard shot. This is just a 15 pace, 15 paces to the hole. Yeah, you'd think that if this comes up a little bit short, it could end up back at her feet again just have to commit to it and stay fluid through the shot and accelerate. Yep, she did just that. Beautiful. That was textbook. Look at 17 and 18 last year. About to make the par here. We have a moment. We invite you to get connected with the LPGA on social media. They're on Facebook. On Twitter, they're at LPGA. Instagram, at LPGA underscore tour. We've got one of the fastest players on tour, and Nelly Corda, nursing a two-shot lead. How hard is this for a fast player, Morgan? Yeah, I think mean, I Ideally, especially with the role that she's on. She's just birdied her last two holes, probably a little bit of adrenaline as well. It, it might help to slow it down just a little bit, but she does like to play fast. It, it happens on tour. You're used to it. You're used to, on occasion, having weights like this. But what this weight shows is how challenging this hole is. Yeah. 
and how long it is taking the players to play because of that back right hole location and the players who have missed it in the water. Farsi for a par at 17. Steady. Okay, it's going to be a bogey. Boy, she's going to, that's a hard one to get past, missing that fairway today when she's been really making a good move on this back nine. I mean, she's not guaranteed to be in the CME Group Tour Championship just yet. She's okay at the moment, but, you know, a bogey, a double, a double bogey really makes a big difference. And the bogey's been posted and she's uh, still in. She's projected at 57th. Now, Lexi to save par. Two shots, not ideal, but she could still win. Three shot difference, it's gonna be difficult. The two shot swing is what she and Nelly had last year on the 18th. She bogeyed, Nelly birdied. Okay, good up and down. And had 84 yards. They said 100 yards is is fine, and the ball pitched flag high and spun back off the green. So it's very, very difficult with that second shot. Get the number right, especially with the amount of spin that Lexi puts on it. Nelly began the day two shots back. She birdied her first hole, birdied seven, birdied eight, birdied ten. And this beauty at the 13th. I mean, she has just been absolutely flawless with her ball striking this week, only having missed one fairway. She would make that for birdie. She and Lexi were tied at 13 under, and she took driver and then took advantage. Man, this was a huge drive. Left her with just a little wedge into this challenging hole. And she talked about being a little off with her distance control on the first round after all of that rain and struggling to dial it in, but she is dialed in today. And then at the 17th, she caught a sprinkler head hit right down the middle with her tee shot. It bounded forward. She hit an absolute dart in here with her second and converted the birdie. And now it's Nelly, who's won seven times on tour. On the second one. She's Going never won when trailing, entering the final round. And so she did today. Really so, good target, good tempo. Come on. Look at our tee shot of Nelly Corda here with her. <coughs> she has hit nearly every fairway this week. One here would go a long way to her eighth win. She hears that a lot. She has this week. Doesn't, I mean, nothing has flustered her today. It's been a windy day. It's been tough to play from that perspective. And she's just been so on balance. 17. Second shot for Corpus. It's just a moment ago. Uh, and this is from 130. And the seven on. And normally her seven on goes 150. That just tells you how this into the wind and coolness is playing on these players right now. Yeah, and it, it plays kind of uphill, doesn't it, Karen? So you're hitting up into the wind. Let's see if Stark can get it right. Corpus did a lovely shot there. It was absolutely beautiful. And you're right. I mean, the flag is perched right, right in front of those big, deep bunker at the front of the green. But Stark's only got 102. So the way she puts spin on the ball, she has to land this past the hole. Yeah, I feel like she only really has one speed, Karen, full speed. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, it's going to stay there. It's going to not be an easy putt, but it's a lot better than being short. So Nelly Corder safely away at the 18th. Lexi now has that weight. Hey, uh, successfully defend here.
the 18th has just been a brute. All three years they played the Pelican Women's Championship. 28 double bogeys or worse this week. And Hyoju Kim is the latest victim. When you take a drop here, it's even just hard to get the ball to stay. Yeah. Drop it twice and then end up placing. Even to get it to stay when placing is a challenge. And the wait continues for Nelly. The rain pants on. It was chilly on Sunday last year. Lexi and Nelly went overtime with Lydia Ko and Se Young Kim. She's added the sweater and the rain pants. Nelly Ewing. Wow, Hyoju Kim sees if she can get her all to stop. Gonna have this putt. It's been another good week for Allie. Good second half of the season, including that victory in Cincinnati. Tied for fifth at the moment. Yeah, this will probably actually be only her second top ten of the year. Her only other one coming at that victory in Cincinnati. Par 70. It's three rounds in the 60s for Alley. Let's not uh, ground the club just to be safe here. Hyoju Kim, fourth shot on the par four. Yeah, that came out really low. Had to be a little bit of a miss hit. That's just when you've already been struggling on the day and yeah. and. It's just tiring. <laughs> you're at the end of the tournament. You're already having a rough day, and then this happens to you on 18. It's not a lot of fun. So Nelly waits in the fairway. Lexi waits back on the tee. And for Poos and Stark in that on, final want to chip the six? I think six is Putt for Kim. Should have a decent amount of left to right break in this, a little bit up the hill. Ninth ranked player in the world. A winner this year at the Lotte Championship. A home sponsor advantage for her out in Hawaii. Two over today. You just got to trust it. Okay, we're going to get it up in the air. We're just going to hit our little 90 percenter. Play our number here. I like a one, I like a one six eight shot. One six eight, right at it. Come on, one six eight. All right, second shot for our leader by two, Nelly Corda at the toughest hole on the course, the 18th. Grant, she has 152 to flag. She needs to hit this at least 145 minimum into a cool breeze. Yesterday made bogey. Damn, that's a really tough spot. Everything runs away from her down towards that water. Very short sided. That's going to be tricky. Again, really long waits off the tee and with a second. 17. Copoos for birdie. Oh, this will be a nice little putt to make for her. Yeah, it was a lot After of having a drought all day long. Yeah, there was a lot of movement on that. And she's made back-to-back -back birdies. 
So Kopus ahead of Stark. Bit of extra cash at the end of the day. If we're going to look at this tee shot of powerful Lexi Thompson with our top tracer technology. She can't tell what Nellie's doing up ahead, but she's two back as she tees it up here. Some, somehow she's got to figure out a way to make a birdie three. And with her power, it's possible. Starts with a good drive here. She may know that she didn't hear much applause after Nellie's second, but she won't quite know that Nellie's in a little bit of trouble. No, and, and most players just work so hard to stay committed to the present. The only thing she's thinking about right now is this tee ball. The tee ball is actually the easy part on this hole. It's the second. There's a the bunker left. Well, that was low and left. And lucky she got through that first bunker. Is she in the next one? Can't no, tell she's in the angle. grassy area. It was not a well-struck drive, but it's in the grass. A little bit of a low left duck hook there. Just a little bit too much release the club. Let's take a look here, see what happens in the transition. It looked all right, just she's been making this motion in practice where she's trying to hold the club off through the shot. And she just didn't do that there. She just let the club release too much and maybe avoiding hitting it right, having a anti-right thought in her head. Par putt for Maya Stark, good two putt in the end. She was actually coaching the uh, Swedish girls team coming into this week, spent some time with the juniors. Today's coverage is brought to you by Konica Minolta. To learn more, visit RethinkWork.com. By Volunteers of America, helping those who need it most for over 125 years. And by Skechers Go Golf, comfort-driven styles worn by Brooke Henderson. So with Lexi left of the fairway at this 18th, Nelly Corda has gone over the green. They've been playing preferred lies, lift clean in place all week long. How much of an advantage will that be here? Okay. How big a part in Angela Stanford for this group? Well, I think Nelly. It, it's a huge advantage because now she can kind of set the ball up. Um, she can choose her shot instead of the lie dictating what chip shot she has to hit. Is she off a little bit of a down slope, even even if she when she does place this down? Yeah, but it's not that bad. It didn't go all the way up the hill. Um, the green is running away from her on once she gets on the putting surface, but she has a little backstop just right of the flag. So I think she could do a number of things here. Um, Looks like she's maybe trying to find a way around that drain or sprinkler head that's in the way close to the edge of the green. She's waited for every shot here and she's waiting again. This is a fourth shot for Saganda. Seems like ages ago, birdied her first four holes today and had a two shot lead. Trying to win six years to the day after her last of two LPGA Tour titles. A shake of the head for Saganda. And she's taking her time, which is good. And I, it looks like she's going to chip it. She does love Angela to chip from these tight line chips. Does she need to land this in the fringe? I think she does. I, I don't think she wants to fly it all the way to the green, but this might, this is where growing up on this grass comes in handy. Up and down to make Lexi have to make it. Sit, sit, sit. Mm -mm. Well, I'll say this she's going to have a putt from about the spot where she made two birdies last year late. 
one in regulation to get into a playoff and one to win it. She's putting nearly straight up the hill. Might fall a little bit to the right. That is a familiar looking putt for her. So Kay said it. This is uh, where Lexi's tee shot came to rest. A huge break, at least it would seem. She's going to have a bit of a tough angle. With that slope so close to the left side of where this whole location is located today, she's going to have to go more yeah, right, over that. Scene around this clubhouse. This new event has not disappointed. Say Young Kim came here after winning the KPMG Women's PGA in 2020, got it done. Nelly emerged in a playoff and uh, something to wet her whistle here before this par putt that would really make it tough on Lexi Thompson. Slightly ajar for Lexi, who's trying to do to Nelly what Nelly did to her right here a year ago. Looking for a two shot swing to force extra holes. That was right in the heart. Maybe the third or fourth putt she's left just short in the heart today. And it, that's as well as she played. Lexi needs a birdie to tie. got to be at least 200 hurt. Yeah, I think it's at least 200. Lexi Thompson yeah. needs birdie to force a playoff with Nelly Corda. This is a 210 board. Yeah. I like it. Straight in from there? Dead in. person in the yellow has just left? Yeah. I mean, you can really go at it. It's going to carry it. Yeah, no. All right. That's good. This is about as hard and daunting a second shot that you could ever ask for. Water looming right, 187 yards. You heard it. She's going to play this at least 200, if not longer. It's wind hurting. A big flag in the distance there, Kay, straight into her face. It's a shot of her life right here. Well, it's peeling right. Will it stay? She will have a pitch to force a playoff as she reaches for her back. Leo Kay. But this 18th. It's just been nearly impossible all week. He's playing 4.62 today. It's just, a, it's everything you want in a hole. Fossey going with five iron. She pull hooked her drive as well, coming off the pine straw. 171 yards playing close to 200 as well. She's pulled it. A par here would put her into the CME Group Tour Championship next week. Bogey or worse, and Well, she found, so found sure. the putting surface, Grant, but it's going to be a heck of a two-putt attempt. It's going to go up and over. Two huge mountains. So Nelly Corda adding up her score. A lone bogey at the 18th, a 64, and Lexi Thompson needs to hold a pitch shot to force a playoff.
Lexi Thompson, a Florida girl, has been the face of the LPGA for more than a decade now. Winner as a teenager before she even got to the LPGA Tour as a member. Around here for 11 seasons now as a member. She's won 11 times, but it's been three plus years since her last LPGA Tour title. And yet, she keeps finding a way to get herself into contention. And now, she needs to find the bottom of the cup with this third shot at the 18th to force a playoff with Nelly Corda. And as much as she tries to stay in the moment, you have to think she knows exactly what she needs right here. I'm sure Nicholas does, her brother. Move these ropes, perhaps. And uh, Kay, is that an area in which she could lift clean in place? I don't believe it is, is it? No, she's in some, um, she's off the tightly mown area. Yeah. I do leave, although it, I don't know if it constitutes exactly rough, but it looks like she's kind of in a little bit of an indentation that she may want to ask if it's a um, an old drainage area or something going on there. It almost looks like the edge of a little seam. Looks like she's maybe. Almost no matter the length it's cut. Because, like, you're in the same type of what's on that bank. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that short cut. Yeah, the, the question is, I think Nicholas just wanted to make sure that she's in the short grass area where she would be entitled to to lift clean in place. And it would help greatly because the ball's not sitting very well. It looks like it's in a, in a strange depression. It's hard to tell. It looks like just to Nicholas's right is a little bit more rough. Mitch Moon, GA rules official. Just, it's short, short grass, grass right? Same, same as what's on the here. bank and in the fairway. Yeah, to me it's looking like if we're looking like it's the same. Yeah, because we've been given we've been given relief for or lifting in place from kind of in that area. Okay. So, so then, right. yeah. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. you. So she is able to pick it up. Just don't place it right there. Well, that's going to be very helpful and it's going to give her a much better chance of possibly chipping this in which it's it's doable it's going to be a low percentage yeah. chance but it is a possibility she did hit a beautiful one in the last hole okay yep you're chipping on this line pretty much so it's right to left a little bit away and then it kind of works back into you Right where she's standing there is Morgan, probably about the spot where she's going to want to land it, just past the edge of the green, and then it's going to fe start feeding down right to left. And overall, once it gets on the green, it's going to be a little bit uphill. Yeah, it might bounce forward just a little bit when it lands on the green, but she'll be able to move it out of that little depression that it was in and give herself a nice lie to be able to generate some spin. She knows, not no, sure she knows where she stands. Well, yeah, I'm not sure that she looked at the leaderboard, but I know her, her brother did. And he kind of rolled his eyes once he looked up there and saw that they were just one back. No more than that, right? Definitely no more than that. Trying to find as nice a lie as she can and not go any further closer to the water because then okay. she's going to have an awkward oh, stance with her exactly. heels well below her toes. I think she's looking to get it up a little bit higher, Morgan, up where it's more level. Yeah, that looks like a nice spot right mm -hmm. there where she's looking. 
then she'll have a little more than normal stance. Yeah. The ball has to come to rest. I mean, this is a shot you would hole how often if you're just even playing around with friends? One out of 15 or 20? I was thinking about the 15 number maybe. Yeah, I like that. I was going to say being an optimist, one out of 10. But <laughs> that's probably being way too optimistic. She's had some bad breaks. Is she due for a good one? A great shot, but not great enough. And after a very different kind of season, it is a very similar result. Nellie Corda goes back to back at the Pelican Women's Championship. She played like a champion today. Her caddy Jason told me we're due for a big Sunday round, and did they ever put one together? Congrats, Nellie. Nice and Peter, beginning of last year, Along with mom, Regina saw her win for the first time. To win for the first time in the U.S. was the first of four wins. This was the fourth of last year, plus the Olympic gold medal. And just to think about what she's been through this season yes. with the blood clots and taking all that time away, back to number one in the world. Maria Fossi with an enormous moment here to get her into next week's CME Group Tour Championship. Two putts would do it. Is this it is like putting the Himalayas course at St. Andrews. And she jokingly said to me, walking up to this green, Grant, would you like to two putt this for me? Mm. And I said, no, I think you can, you got a good challenge ahead of you. Oh, we're uh, literally coming down to the final, you know, few dollars and cents here and points to determine whether or not Maria Fossi will have enough CME points to make it to next week's final event of the season. She's played in it once before. She's got this putt for par. Morgan, I wonder, would you have at least practiced that putt once or twice early in the week? I probably would have had a contest with my caddy. <laughs> <laughs> probably would have seen who could have gotten it closer. Oh. And if she had just gotten over that last crest, it could have crept down to within three or four feet. But now this is a, a 25 footer, really tough putt on its own. Yeah, that's gonna be a really unfortunate finish. I don't know, I don't think it's gonna be enough to get her into CME, but she's put together a wonderful week. And then to bogey the last two holes. Mm. We'll see. I can understand, you can understand the bogey here. This is such a hard hole, but that one at 17 is gonna really be tough for her to erase from the memory banks. Aria Jatanagarn is watching anxiously. Aria's never missed the CME Group Tour Championship, but she would be the one knocked out if Fossey gets in. This is for bogey. This score is posted. We will have the projection. Top 63 make it because three players aren't going to play next week. Lexi, how about that pitch shot, Morgan? I thought, I mean, she had to make it, and she nearly did. It was really well done. This is for par for her fourth second place finish this year and the ninth since her last victory. It is a par for Lexi. She'll come up one shot short. She'll make her way down to Tiburon, where she's won before. She put together a good fight, especially after bogeying 11 and 12. A little bit unlucky on a couple of those shots. 
spun back off the green, but all eyes on Nelly Korda today. Number one on the leaderboard. And